What's up, guys? It's Brett Bassinger here, but you might know me better as Star Girl, which season three is premiering hopefully this year. So check it out. But right now, I'm here in the man cave with Elias. What's up? Breck, welcome to the cave. Hey, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you uh, for giving me a few minutes today to talk about uh, your career, Star Girl, like everybody knows, and if they tune in. Uh, how does it first? One of the first questions I have for you is, how does it feel to be cemented into the DC universe, like forever? Well, yeah, I think that's like from the very beginning. That was one of the things I was most excited about because once you play a superhero, you're in that like DC encyclopedia where when they look up. Who's played Star Girl? Like my name will forever be there. So as an actor, I feel like that's that's pretty up there on like goals of acting things. It's like it's like what else can you hit on that bucket list now? Oh my gosh! I feel like okay. So now I've done a comic to screen, maybe like a book ad adaption to screen. That would be cool. If I'm putting it out there in the universe. <laughs> so uh, before we get more into Stargirl and everything, and I want to get to know a little bit more about you, like what made you get into the acting world? What pushed you? Yeah, it's this is always so funny. Uh, so I'm from a small town in Texas. I'm actually back home. I, I moved back to Texas during the pandemic. Um, and ever since I was probably five, I just would tell people like, I'm going to be an actress. And they're like, oh, that that's cute. <laughs> um, it all started when I found out the moon wasn't made of cheese and I no longer wanted to be an astronaut. So I had to come up with something else. Um, but there's this really great acting school that's like 45 minutes from my hometown. So mm. when I was 10, I finally, like my mom let me start taking acting classes because I wouldn't shut up about it. <laughs> um, and then through my acting school, I got an LA agent. I went out to LA to kind of test the waters for a week just to see if I was ready for the big, the big wigs. Yeah. Um, and it was a really like it was a really great experience. I got a bunch of callbacks and like notoriety for my auditions. So my agents were like, okay, maybe come out here for a month, really try to see if you can book something. And then I I ended up booking something that like kept bringing me back to LA for over the next year and, mm. and like, got a show and then I got Star Girl. That's awesome. Is there anybody that you look up to into the acting world? That you, not, not that you try to like model yourself after, but like study, like watching their work and to see how you wanted to, to portray people or even yeah, like your, your own I acting mean, skills. Yeah. There's so many, so many talented actors and actresses. I mean, growing up, like I always really loved, this is quite, interesting saying it now but like Johnny Depp like the way he mm -hmm. really goes into characters and is such a character driven actor that's something I really aspire to be because yeah. as of now in my career I've kind of played characters that really reflect Breck as an individual so I'm hoping like in the future I can get more like character type roles um but then someone who I just like really look up to is Reese Witherspoon I think she just like seems like a wonderful mother, a wonderful human being, but also like super talented, funny actress. Um, and I feel like the roles she grew up playing are roles that I could definitely see myself playing as well. Uh, is there somebody that you would hopefully someday you could work with? Actually, funny enough, with like Reese Witherspoon, um, the Legally Blonde cast, I've I've worked with a very good amount of them. Okay. And at this point, I think I literally have two of like the Legally Blonde, like main actors left. Like, you know, Luke Wilson playing my dad. Um, Allie, who's in that, she played my mom in a movie that's coming out this year. So I'm like, yeah. gotta slowly tick it off. So I'll, just, I'll stick with Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So um, besides Stargirl, uh, like what's been like other projects you've worked on before? Like what, what do you think has made a big impact on you? Or do you think yeah, it's Stargirl? I mean, before I did Stargirl, um, I did a show called Bell and the Bulldogs, which was yeah. a kid show on Nickelodeon. You can see my little, my my football right yeah. there. Um, I, I have a bunch of posters too, which you can't see, but I have my Bell and the Bulldogs posters. Um, but I did that from the ages of like, maybe right before I turned 15, so 14 to 17. So mm. not only was that like, you know, that's a very developing time of life. That's those high school years where you're figuring out like who you are as an individual, but then also like throw yourself on a TV set and do that. I feel like that show 
was such a wonderful experience and truly like has just really helped me get that set experience where when I walk on a set now I feel very confident and mm -hmm. getting that from a young age I felt very blessed oh, wow. would you ever go back to do a Nickelodeon show or a movie if you could Oh my gosh, it's so funny. I was talking to one of my, my friends who's on Disney Channel for years and we were just recently talking about this because, you know, there's different, I like to use the word elevated. And so, okay. you know, you always want to look for the next project that perhaps elevates your career. So sometimes the idea of going backwards to doing something you've already done is like, yeah. is that good? But multi-camera sitcoms are like, for me, like a dream job when it comes to acting because the hours are so much easier. Like you're you're only filming two to three days of the week versus mm. five to six days of the week. Um, so I don't see myself going back anytime soon, but I can also like one day totally see myself being like that funny mom on a kid's show. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you never know. Disney Plus could be calling you too. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> so Star Girl. Let's let's hear the story. How did you get approached for this project? Do you remember your audition for this? And how did you like prepare for your audition? Oh, I absolutely remember it. It was such a unique time of my life mm. because I had been off the Nick show for about a year. Okay. In two weeks before I got the audition for Star Girl, I had what's called a screen test for an Amazon show. And screen test is like it, it was between me and one other girl. You go in, you sign a contract before you even meet with the network. So then if they want you, you can't be like, well, I want more money. You like sign a contract before you even go in. And I didn't get it. And it was my best audition I'd ever had. Like when I left the casting director pulled me aside and hugged me and was like, thank you for that performance. Like that was amazing. I was like, I have this in the bag. Didn't get it. So I was heartbroken. And like with a screen test, you know, you're signing a contract. So immediately you start seeing like what, how it would change your life. Mm. So I already like visualized like the money I would be making and the consistency and it was filming in a different country. And, like I started looking up like what it would be like to live in that country. Um, so when Star Girl came around, I was fresh and heartbroken from this experience and I just didn't even want a picture. I was like, I could get so close and still not get it. Mm. So I had the first audition and I just like, I went in there and I was like, I'm just going to do my best. I'm not going to get attached to anything because I'm not ready for my heart to be broken again. Um, and it went really well. And then I got a call back in the second call back. It was like with the casting directors and Jeff Johns, our showrunner. Yeah. At the time I had no idea who, who Jeff was. Now I'm like, he's one of my best friends. And I know like in the DC world, he knows everything and everyone. Um, I just went in, he's super nice, did it. Then they brought me in for a work session and the work session was before the screen test. And I actually told my, my agents, I was like, I don't want to see the contract. I don't care how much money I would be making, just like sign it. I don't care. I'm not going to get attached to it. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, it was between like me and three other girls. Maybe there, I think there was four of us at the screen test. And I'm sorry, I'm making this story pretty long, but um, I was supposed to have been flying out to the Bahamas for a vacation on Thursday. And the screen test was on Friday. And they're like, you need to change your flight. I'm like, I'm not going to change my flight if I'm not even going to get it. And like, yeah. no, Brett, change your flight. So I ended up changing my flight to Saturday morning and did the, no, 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 it was Friday night. Did the screen test Friday, went straight from the screen test to the airport. Cause I'm like, I'm going on vacation. Mm. My mom was dropping me off at the airport and I get a call from a random number and it's Jeff. He's like, Hey, I just wanted to let you know before you go on vacation you're our star girl oh. and immediately I just started crying I was like, oh. <laughs> and I like finally let myself feel it and picture it and then I had to call my agents and be like can you send me the contract I should probably look at it <laughs> <laughs> that's cool and how long was it before you started filming like after gosh. you booked so freaking long I think it was six months maybe okay. um you know, I was the very first to be cast on the show. So they had to okay. cast everyone else. Then we had to get our super suits made, which took like, I think mine, I had like 17 fittings or something. Wow. Um, so there was like a lot to do before actually filming. Not to throw you off sidetrack, but I've had Neil Hopkins on the show before and Alex Collins last year and Eric <laughs> Goins, all great guests. Yes, dude, our villains are the best. Like my favorite characters ISA villains. The best. <laughs> so you booked the role. 
not only you play Stargirl, but you also play Corny Whitmore. How do you like approach to play like basically two different characters? Yeah, for me, a lot of it has to do with physicality, like changing mm. my my posture, just being very aware of like, I feel like Courtney's, you know, she's a lot more silly and right. playful, but when she's star girl, it's more like business. But even just like when I put the super suit on, like immediately my posture changes and I feel mm. like, you know, I'm more of a superhero. So I feel, I feel like yeah. the super suit helps me a lot kind of go back and forth. When you booked the role after, did you go and like try to read comics and any type of research to like how you wanted to play this character? I know you wanted to be a little bit different from the comics also. Uh, I have all my comics here. Um, I actually just recently got the newest Stargirl comic, which I think came out just a month or two ago. And it's so cool because in the Stargirl comics, she's always had like bangs. Clearly, I don't mm. have bangs. And they changed it and it looks exactly like me. That's and they awesome. even have like, they have um, Pat now looks exactly like Luke does. Barbara looks exactly like Amy does. Like they, mm. and there's even our dog, like Buddy. He's in the comics now, and that mm. was really exciting for me. I just got the comic, so That's I had awesome. a fan um, But I did. I read the comic just more because I wanted to be educated of the universe. Mm. Um, it's a huge universe, so I still only understand like one person of it. Um, but that's why I love having Jeff on set every day because any DC question I had, like he would have an answer times five. So, mm. is there a, a story in the comics that you read that you're hoping it will eventually make it to the TV show? Yeah, well, the very first comic I ever read, what featured paintball, which we kind mm. of went to um, in season two, which was really cool for me to see, like the live, more realistic interpretation of what like paintball would be. Yeah. Um, I really love the, I'm such a girl. I love like romantic couple stuff. Yeah. So the, the star girl Shazam okay. relationship, I think would be hilarious. Um, I don't know how they would figure that out, but mm. I think that'd be fun. What do you uh, what do you think is the biggest challenge like for you like connecting with Courtney and then connecting with Stargirl? Any mm -hmm. challenges? Yeah, the biggest challenge I know for Courtney for sure, and I guess this kind of goes to Stargirl, but mainly Courtney is her naiveness. Okay. It's one of the things I love about her because it's so innocent. But Breck as an individual is like very analytical, and I like overthink everything. Where Courtney is very impulsive and just like let's do it. Mm. so sometimes like when I get a script I would be like no Courtney like why are you doing that you need to make a better plan and I'd be like step back Breck this is Courtney this isn't Breck mm. she's 16 you're 23 like um that's something I kind of struggled with and then as for star girl I really struggled with the staff work at the beginning I have my staff over there I love it. it's mm. my most prized possession um but they, I was not, I had never worked with a bow staff ever. I had done gymnastics. I had done, I had a background in like, uh, like UFC training and okay. wrestling. But when it came to bow staff, they put it in my hand and instantly I had two left feet. So that like definitely had some challenges to overcome there, but it's been cool to kind of like learn that skill. And now I like on my resume, I'm like bow staff. Yeah. <laughs> You um when we mentioned we're talking about the character, is there if you could, is there anything you would change about Courtney or about Star Girl? And do you ever like run ideas with uh with the creator? Oh, absolutely. Actually, um I I came up with a huge kind of like plot point, which I now realize he really integrated in season three. So I can't talk about it. Okay. But there was this question people would always ask about the staff. And I came up with this like backstory on why the staff works this way. Mm. And I told Jeff about it. And I don't even think he processed, but like season three, he was like, okay, this is how it's going to end. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, Jeff, I literally, that's exactly what I told him. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're right. I do remember that conversation. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> You mentioned, you mentioned the staff like is there a, any other favorite like a uh, element of the show that you like a uh, virtual effect I guess that you like instead of that yeah I I actually really this is it sounds pessimistic I don't love scenes with stripe 
because there's nothing there mm -hmm. except a tennis ball on a 16 foot metal pole. And I find that a lot of the scenes I have with Stripe, I'm supposed to be talking to my stepdad. So they're like very emotional. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's kind of hard to be emotional when you're talking to a 16 foot metal pole. Um, I really, you know what? I really love doing scenes when it's the whole, the whole JSA. Mm -hmm. Just like us as a team, all in our super suits. I feel like it, it feels very powerful when we're all on set together. Yeah. You mentioned now the suit, and you took, you said you had seventeen different times to try it on to like yeah, how, give or take a few. How like is it comfortable at all shooting those long days? Oh no, it's so uncomfortable. Uh, no, I have I have like when we would have like let's say five days straight of super suit, I mm. would get bruises and like blood okay. blisters on my back because it's I mean it's just so it's supposed to be skin tight. Um, and you know you wear anything that tight for that long and it's it's yeah. inevitable it's just so uncomfortable but i i love it i have like i love my super suit i think it's a lot more functional than some super suits that i see how hot does it get wearing that one those hot days that you're shooting oh my gosh the first season we filmed what we call hot lana because we film in atlanta yeah. atlanta gets really freaking hot and i would just be dripping sweat but fortunately mine's like a crop top and biker shorts the poor like rest of the JSA and they're like layers and capes right. and blah, blah, blah. But the last two seasons, they decided to film in winter when it got like literally one day it was like sleeting. It was, I think the coldest it got was like in the twenties as I'm in like wow. a crop top and shorts. And I would just be in the middle of the side, like my teeth chattering, my bones aching, but <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned earlier, you've done a little like uh, training, like UFC and stuff like that. Like, have you done your own stunts? Yeah. Yeah. So my my brothers were both like state champion, nationally ranked wrestlers, okay. which a lot of wrestlers get into UFC. So we have just a lot of like family friends. So, like through that, I like somehow would always end up at like wrestling camp mm. with them. Like I'd get bored and be like, I'm just gonna do it with you guys. Um but yes, I feel like I got to do more of the combat, like the combat fighting as the season, like as we got more into the show, because they like trusted me more and saw that I was capable. But you know, if there was any way for me to get really hurt, they wouldn't let me do it just because like from a liability purpose. So I did have a wonderful stunt double, Christina. She was with me on and off throughout all the three seasons. Um, She's like bad to the bone. She makes me look so cool. <laughs> <laughs> What's been like your favorite stunt that you've done? And you'd be like, you're excited to do it. Yeah, honestly, I really love wire work. Um, it can okay. be very painful. I've had like a lot of, I actually have a couple of scars from wire work. That's what I said. Like even the most easy stunts, you can still get so hurt just because, you know, if you're flipping 20 feet in the air, there's just room for error but i'm proud of those scars like i have i'm just like really i'm like this is my star girl scar from season one this is my star girl scar from season two um but season three and i believe it's the it's the first or second episode i got to do quite a bit of wire work mm. um with joel McHale, who has is coming on as a series regular yeah. um and that was really fun there was one where i get to like twist up in the air and do like a bunch of spins and it just felt like I was on a roller coaster. Like my stomach would drop every time. It was so fun. I was told to ask you about Arrowverse. Are we ever going to see you maybe show up at a different show? Would you like to be on a show up? And if you could, which one would you want to be on? Yeah. Um, you know, ever since like the first season there, I there have been talks of it. I know oh. at a point, like it was literally about to happen. Like I was going to go to Vancouver and be on a different show. I mean, it kind of fell through. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think it's still a possibility for sure. Um, what show? I mean, my answer kind of sucks because I really wanted to be on Supergirl because I felt like Supergirl and Stargirl would just be like the most iconic duo ever. Yeah. But that ended. So maybe like Melissa can come be on Stargirl. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um you, you, you keep mentioning season three when are we expecting season three to drop have you heard any news i i wish i had i absolutely know nothing this is me making an assumption our show has aired or last season aired end of summer i think yeah. our, was august so i would assume it'd be around that same time but like i know just as much as you so 
I know that you can't tell spoilers or anything, but what do you hope for when the viewers tune in for season three? What do you hope that you get out of it? Oh my gosh. They're going to get so much clarity. They're like, something I love about our show is all the slow burn storylines from like Courtney and Cameron, Icicle Son, like Icicle Jr. Just, we dive into stuff that has been being teased since first season. Okay. And I'm just excited for the audience to get clarity on these really huge plot points. Now, I mentioned earlier about the villains. Who's been your favorite villain? And who's been your favorite cast member to work with? Oh my gosh. Well, Yvette Monrell, who plays Wildcat, she's like my best friend in real life. Like she'll yeah. probably be my maid of honor one day. Like I love her. So every time I had a scene with her, it was so fun, but we always like got into trouble because we were having too much fun. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. But also like Luke and Amy are so inspiring and so sweet and yeah. fun. And every time I had a scene with Luke, it was like so easy like the crew would be so happy they're like oh just wreck and luke all day we'll be out of here early because we just like got through it um i have to talk i really love alex who you Mm. said she interviewed he he came on to set second season so we were already like an established show and family and he just Mm. like fit right in he's such an amazing actor so kind um i hope i I get some more Alex in my life because I adore him. Hey, you never know. Somehow he, he could end up back with, the, you yeah. never know with these comics. True. <laughs> um, are we, um, are they planning to introduce any new characters? Is there anything you can tell us about there? Like, like, cause there, there's characters from the, like the comics in the eighties. Have you heard any like rumblings or anything about certain characters showing up season three, season four or down in the future? Um, I know we do have some more like flashback stuff with some really okay. iconic characters. Yeah. Um, Jade comes back, mm-hmm. Green Lantern's daughter. Um, there's, I don't know. Let me look it up. I don't know if it's released yet, so I don't want to spoil anything. Mm, what would that character's going be? I don't know, but yes, we have we have a couple of new really mm. cool characters in season three. Yeah. What's been your favorite moment of the first two seasons? Ooh, I know, I know. I absolutely loved being eclipsed at the end mm. of season two. Courtney is such a light, so she never gets to be evil or bad or mean. So it was so fun to like, get eclipsed and be eclipsed. So even though it was just for like one short scene, it was so fun. That's awesome. Now we've had two seasons of Stargirl. How's it been like for you so far, like even like interacting with like comic fans, regular fans, even comic cons? Yeah, I mean, the show premiered May of 2020. So the good majority of it has been during lockdown. Um, Like we didn't even get to have a premiere. I didn't do a press tour, but was it three weeks ago, maybe? I got to go to my first convention. I saw um, that. Yeah, Star Fury Conventions in England. Oh my gosh, it was the greatest experience of my life. I literally cried at the closing ceremony because, you know, when I got past it as Stargirl, I kind of, I I pictured that. I pictured going to Comic-Cons and going Mm -hmm. to all these conventions. And I've been cast as Stargirl for almost four years now. And this is my very first time to get to go out and meet people that have like watched the show and have read the comics. And it was such like a surreal, wonderful moment. Like I'm trying now to like go to all the conventions because yeah. I just love meeting people that have watched it. It just warms my heart so much. So as of a month ago, 10 out of 10, loved it. will do again. What was the first time you had your first fan come up to you for your autograph and like take a picture with you how did that make you like feel uh well I I on the Nickelodeon show I got recognized a lot kids right. are crazy I love them but like yeah. I've been like mobbed a couple of times by just like a bunch of like 10 to 14 year olds and I'm like great um <laughs> but it's been interesting being recognized by adults that right. had never happened to me it was always people much younger than me um and I think that feels pretty good just as a young actor who looks even younger than I am. I always feel like I have to almost, this is just me being honest, like overcompensate for like, respect for my peers because I look so young and have like, 
I'm very energetic. So they, once again, like categorize me as young. So getting to like be recognized as people that I would consider my peers has been very validating and fulfilling. Mm. Did anybody show up dressed like Stargirl? Yes, two people. And apparently there was a little girl dressed as Stargirl, but then she got Uh, sick and had to leave and I missed her. Um, So shout out to her if she sees this. So we're hoping for season three, maybe end of summer. Now, what's next for you now? Like any other projects you're allowed to tell us that you're working on? Yeah. Like viewers and listeners can. Um, I filmed a movie last year, like I said, with Ali Larder and Sean okay. Aston. Um, it's called Man in the White Van. So that should be premiering sometime this year. I think they're hoping for a theatrical release, but I'm not sure. Um, and then I just filmed a movie called Quarter, which is based off of this 25 year old diabetic and I have diabetes. Right. So that was really right. cool to be a part of. I'm just like a small little cameo um, in that. And then I'm in, right now I'm in negotiations for like three different movies that oh, I can't wow. talk about yet, but um, okay. hopefully so I'll- keeping be- busy, keeping busy. Yeah, I try, I try. I love being right. busy, so. Uh, lastly, how can the, how the viewers and listeners find you on social media? What do you like to use? I mainly use Instagram, which is, it's just my name, at Breck Bassinger. I kind of suck at social media. I, I'm better at my dog's social media than my own. Like, my <laughs> dog posts more than me. Um, but, yeah, I, li- I like it. I'll still, like, if you tag me and stuff or DM me, I try to go look at that thing. Mm, that's great. Breck, I want to thank you for coming on today and giving me a few minutes. And, uh, yes. yeah, to thank you for coming on the show. The pleasure is all mine, truly. Like, I love talking about Stargirl. So. Oh, my God.